Hello everyone, I'm Ethan with Mako Products Superlock TV and today we're talking about tube benders and how to bend tubing, so stick around. Alright, now if you are new to tube bending, uh, there's a lot of terms and you know features of these tools that can be kind of difficult to you know, kind of get your mind wrapped around. I know the first time I started looking at this, uh, it was just mind bending, you know, hearing all these terms and angles and, and shapes and things that people were talking about. So um, we're gonna start with just looking at the anatomy of a tube bender and seeing what each individual part is there for. Um, so if you're sitting here thinking, oh man, I've already, I've already know quite a bit about tube benders and I'd really just, like to kind of understand more about bending itself, um, you know, feel free to go ahead and skip forward to that part. Uh, if you're so inclined, otherwise stick around because you may find something useful here. All right, so let's start with this here. So this is a Imperial Roto Lock type bender. Um, it's going to have just a couple extra features that like a typical leverage type tube bender may not. Um, so we're going to cover this one to make sure all features get covered. Um, so obviously we've got our two handles. We've got this, what's called the tube latch. We've got, um, this one's gonna have a handle release. Other handles or other tube benders may have a different type of release on here that would allow you to change the angle, how it engages with that shoe. Um, obviously we've got our rollers inside the mechanism here. That's to make sure we don't scar the tubing as we're rolling it through. And then on the back side, on this handle, there's actually a vice block. So this is kind of a very useful feature. If you have access to a vice, you can actually clamp this vice or clamp this bender directly into position so that you don't have to worry about trying to work both handles and you know watch your measurements everything like that it kind of simplifies the process just a little bit so then of course we have our markings on here now so you've got this scale that goes from 0 to 180 which that seems pretty self-explanatory you know if you're looking for a, a bend angle this is where you're gonna look for it but then we've got a 0 a 45 an R and an L on this side of the uh, on this side of the bender, so what these are are actually starting points for the angle bend that you want to make. So when you measure your tube and you make your mark of where the middle of your bend is going to be, you're going to want to line this up on that scale with the angle that you're looking to produce. Now, obviously, there's not every indicator on here um, in between 45 obviously if you're looking for like a 15 or a 30 degree angle you'd want to cut that distance down just a little bit just to kind of give you an idea of what we're working with here but if you want to go all the way to a 90 degree bend that's designated by this L right here and I always thought that was interesting that they didn't just use number designators for these they actually use letters for a few of them so R would be for a reverse bend. Alright so now we're gonna kinda apply this information that we've got from the anatomy of the bender into making some really clean and concise bends here. Um, this is just my dummy block that we've got made up. Um, this is just gonna have a few fittings in it so that we can kinda take some real measurements and make some real bends to kinda demonstrate a little bit easier. Um, we're going to start with taking measurements obviously that's going to be the best always the best place to start now since we're working with tubing we're going to take measurements center to center which means we're going to start in the very center of our first fitting and we're going to measure the distance to the very center line of our end point fitting number two um, you don't want to measure from the edge and then and then measure to the middle or you know sometimes I'll see where people measure from this edge to the close edge 
obviously looking at this we're going to end up too short to actually make it into our fittings so uh, we always want to measure from the very central point to the very central point now with this today what we're doing we're going to just kind of work on we're making a run that goes from here to here and so we're going to have our two fitting points and we're going to come out two inches this one's going to be two inches also all right so now we need to figure the distance between these two we'll measure like this we'll start in the very very center of this fitting and we're going to measure to the very very center of that fitting and what I come up with is about six and a half inches six point five inches now the bulk measurement for that if we just take those numbers together is obviously going to be uh, ten inches of tubing or ten and a half inches of tubing however uh, we don't want to just go ahead and cut a ten and a half inch piece because these corners are not going to end up perfectly square and square corners actually take up just a little bit more tubing than a rounded corner and I'll kind of explain that here in just a little while so for the sake of the demonstration I'm gonna go ahead and mark our piece of tubing that I've got here we're going to mark that at ten and a half inches with blue so we can see where that ten and a half inches actually ends up. Here's our blue mark. Alright, so this is the part of the video where I'm going to ask you guys, hey, if you're enjoying this content, if you, uh, if you appreciate the information that we're sharing with us, you know, feel free to subscribe to our channel or you know, even just drop on us a like or a comment. That really helps us out. We'd really appreciate you know, hearing from you guys, kind of hearing your feedback and what you thought of the video. All right, so for our first measurement, we're gonna go ahead and measure this tube to our two inch mark. And once we've got our first mark on, we're gonna go ahead and we're actually gonna slip a ferrule from the tube fitting that we're working with. We're gonna slip that down over the end of the tube and then we're going to use that to continue that line all the way around this tubing. That'll give us a nice consistent mark so that no matter which direction we end up putting it in the bender we'll be able to see it from all sides. Alright now when we measure two inches this is not going to be two inches from where it comes out of the fitting. This is actually going to be two inches from where it sits on the inside of the fitting. So keep that in mind. If you do need a very specific stick out, you're going to want to make sure you know how deep the tubing sits into your fitting before you make this measurement. Um, so now with that, we're ready to go ahead and throw this in the bender. We're going to slide this in and kind of loosely set this in the jaw. You know, not too tight because we need to be able to move it still. And so now with this, with our zeros lined up, they've always got a start lined up. We're looking for a 90 degree corner. So we're gonna slide this all the way out to our L position. Then we're gonna tighten that tube latch, right? So at zeros, we're sitting right at the L. And we're going to go ahead and make our first bend. Now you'll watch this zero is going to be our marker or indicator for how many degrees of bend we've taken so far. So we're going to go ahead and push this and I'm actually going to stop just a little bit short of 90 right about there because this tubing once it's bent you cannot unbend it but um, you can add a little bit more bend if we didn't quite go far enough. Um, so we're going to want to test this against a known square object. In this case, I've got a little orange speed square. We're going to go ahead and release the tubing from its hold. Pull it out. 
lay the long side against the flat of that square. I'm just going to push this back and you can see there's a little bit I haven't quite bent far enough which we, we kind of assumed. So let's go ahead and throw that back in and we're going to take this just a few degrees further and now we're looking right you can kind of see that edge of the tubing lines up perfectly with the square back of this um, little speed square here. So now it is pretty easy to go ahead and get your next measurement with the tubing in the bender. Um, this just kind of helps, you know, make sure your measurement is consistent. So we're looking for six and a half inches length from the center line of this tubing to where our center line of our next piece of you know, our, our next little bent leg is going to end up. So conveniently, the shoulder of this bender actually ends up about in the middle of the tubing just because of its depth. All right, so measuring from the back side of the bender here, we're going to go ahead and mark right at the six and a half mark. And then same rules as last time, we're going to go ahead and take a ferrule. We're going to slide that up to our mark and mark it around because I know this is a it's a fairly simple shape that we're making today but you know you can get as complex with tubing as you want to get and so if uh, if this was a more complex shape it would matter that we could see that on all sides of the tubing as we're going around so from there we're gonna go ahead and disconnect this from its hold and slide this around and then same rules as last time we're gonna do like a little half lock we're going to make sure we're at zero and we're going to slide this up until it reads right at the L with the zero on zero. Please excuse the tripod in the background here. I'm just trying to show this real quick without having to unmount and remount the other camera. Um, so what we're going to want to worry about when we're loading for the second bend is making sure that the two bends are going to end up in the correct alignment together so they're both 90 degree bends but you know they may be a degree or two off from one another laterally we want to make sure that those are the same so we're going to go ahead and make sure that our bender is level which we can do by placing a level on the flat front of the actual you want to do this from the center mandrel you don't want to do this on the arm or anything like that because these may not be you know, at least the surfaces of them may not be true to the bend direction of this mandrel, but the flat front of the mandrel should get you close enough that we should be able to figure that out. So after we check the level of the mandrel, we're going to go back here and we're going to check and see I'm a little bit off back there. So once we've got it level, so this is level and then our tubing is level with it. We'll know that when this one bends, it'll be in the same plane as the other bend that we've already made. So with that measured and aligned and sat level the way we need it to, we're going to go ahead and make our second bend. And once again, we're going to stop just, we know that right just short of 90 doesn't quite do it. So we're going to go just right at, I believe is the amount of extra we ended up putting on it last time. And if we look at that, that's actually looking really, really nice. All right, we're gonna take our final leg measurement. So we're once again from the heel spur, we're gonna measure two inches. And look how different these marks end up. So. This was our original, that's our original 10 and a half inches. You'll notice we're, you know, about three quarters of an inch extra that this has stretched, actually almost close to an inch, seven eighths or so. Um, and I say stretch, it's not really stretch. You, you'll hear it referred to as tube stretch occasionally. Um, what this really is, is the fact that the, the rounded corners are not taking up as much tube because they are not square corners. They are just slightly rounded, which means you end up with just a little bit of extra slack in them. So I'm gonna go ahead, 
We're going to trim this down and then see how our fit is. We're going to go ahead and trim down to our mark here. Um, to do that, we're going to use a hacksaw. Now you want to be real careful um, not to have this saw kind of hop around or scar this up because any kind of nick or scratch or you know imperfection in this tubing can become a weak point um, especially if it's in the area where the ferrules are going to be biting this will be extremely detrimental to the um, rigidity and longevity of this system if it you know has a weak point to break that's always going to be the point that it's going to break so all right so once we've got this cut we want to go ahead and deburr the end of this tubing because these little uh, flakes and things that are hanging around here that's actually going to prevent us from getting a good seal and can prevent us from even being able to insert this into the fitting so we're going to start with this pointy end and clean the inside then we're going to go ahead and take and we're going to clean up this, the outside edges of this thing. Alright, that's looking pretty good. And you don't, you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to end up chamfering the end of this. Because that will actually also cause issues. But let's go ahead and check our fit. And see if this, uh, if this is going to fit into the jig that we've made up here. Now we're going to go ahead and test fit. So we're going to start with fitting our tubing. And making an insertion mark with no pressure. This is to make sure that she beds all the way in. We're going to take and do it on the other side as well. Once we've got our insertion marks made, we're going to go ahead and give this a test fit. Drop that down into the fittings. Nope, you got to have the nuts loose, otherwise the ferrules will stop you from getting it in there. There we go. And that's sitting flat. That's looking real good. So now with this, with this test fit, we can see that these insertion marks have gone right down to the tops of the fittings. This goes in easily and freely as long as I've got these loosened. This kind of just goes right in and out without any issue. That's what you want. You really, really want this to just hand fit. If you have to force and struggle this in, you're going to end up with what's called side load, which is where the legs of the tubing are actually pressing against the outer walls. You won't be able to get it fully in without scarring up the, you know, the insides of the ferrules and things like that. Um, at which point it can actually affect how tight you end up making your tube fitting. Well, you got to go to hand tight. Well, your hand tight might be completely different if there's load against these fittings. At which point you're really not hand tight, and you may uh, not quite get your fitting tight enough if you go one and a quarter turns from not quite hand tight it can affect you know how how your system is going to perform so it's very very important to make sure that this with the nuts loose is just drop in just like that all right that is it for today's video guys thanks for hanging out with us while we kind of went through this whole process um, if you have anything you'd like to see in a future video drop that in the comments below because we'd love to kind of explain to you you know, anything and everything there is to know about this industry and, and what we do. And if you don't want to leave a comment, well, hey, we're just glad you could hang out with us for a little bit. Um, I hope you learned something interesting and, and new, even if you've seen some tube bending before. Um, beyond that, you guys have a great one, and we'll see you in the next video.